games. Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> I feel great that we're playing in the playoffs. Whatever the whatever the situation or dynamics surrounding it is is you know we're here to play and we're here to win and. You know, three-game series can be great for us if we win the first two games, too, you know. Um, so I feel great. What was your reaction to the Woodruff news? I don't have any reaction to that. I got a text about it a half hour ago. I don't really have it. I mean, it's unfortunate injuries at this time, obviously for the game at large, of not seeing the best players perform. This is this is what it's all about. Um, so it's it's... It's not great for the greater game, for sure. Um, if something like that has happened, I, I I don't really know much about it though, so we haven't really talked too much about it. You guys, base running has been such a weapon this season. Like, how big can that type of playing that way, that asset you guys have, yeah. come to this time of year? It has to be. It's part of the fabric of what we do. It's part of our DNA as a team. It's why we're here. Where we have speed, we have smart base runners. We are capable of taking extra bases. Um, we're capable of putting pressure on the opposition in ways that doesn't necess necessitate a three-run home run. Um, you know, I I'm sure um, the three-run home run is the preferred method of choice for most managers and GMs that sit and watch the games. But I, I feel like when we're at the top of our game, it's something that we do extremely well. And I think in playoff baseball, your ability to do the things that you do well become magnified. How do you feel about where your offense is at the moment? We have not swung the back rate the last few days, um, but it's over, that's over now. You know, it's 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 brand new. Um, guys have to be able to go out there, relax, have the at bats that they need to have, get the barrel on the baseball. Um, I don't necessarily think there's it's going to translate just because for the last couple of days this is how we swung the bats or the last week how we swung the bats and into a playoff series every the environment changes completely. Um, everybody would want to have what any theoretical momentum you would think you would have going in to the next stage, but that's 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 not going to stop us from being prepared on pitch one of day one to go out there and swing the bats like we have during periods of this season. Um, we need to get guys on base to drive our offense. Like that's that's what we need to do. Uh, we haven't done that. We've done that in some cases, even though we haven't scored some runs. But I still feel, on the whole, um, that's an area that we need to continue to push forward. And I think that, you know, we've thrown the ball. I think very well here, which is obviously a good thing. Both the bullpen and some of our starters going into playoff baseball. So I, I do I do feel good about that. Um, and our offense is capable of exploding. Um, we, we've done that through stretches this year. And with the speed and the ability to do some other things, I feel like some of that can translate in playoff baseball as well. So, um, yeah, if, if there was some level of momentum, we'd, I'd rather have it that way. But I, I, don't, I don't look at it other than, you know, it's the end of the regular season. I mean, going back to your previous answer, in the past, it's usually pitching and home runs you talk about the playoffs, probably because of pitcher specialization. Do you think with the new rules that maybe opens up? Some you know chances to win different ways in the playoffs. I, I don't know. Uh, we haven't been in this, this situation, so I can't say that from an experience standpoint. I would say it had some effect for us during the course of this entire season. We're playing by those rules, so yeah, I think I think there's a chance that it does have an impact on the game. Do I think that pitching and three run homers are still going to rule the day in the postseason? Probably um, in some cases, but. Again, I, they, we and we have guys that can hit home runs. I mean, for sure, we have we have guys with capabilities that have twenty plus home runs over the course of the season, some thirty. Um, so we have that power element. It's just not necessarily something that comes every single day for us. That speed element comes every single day for us. And and yeah, I do think it can be an advantage for us with with how the how the game is being played now. I like the way the game is being played now. I think this is part of the intent of what we were trying to establish with the rules that were changing. And I think the game is better because of it. Sometimes, mm -hmm. for, you know, maybe only a week long here and there. What, why do you think that is? You know, that this collection of guys seem to have pretty tough at bats. Yeah, we've, we, I, I don't know. 
we've had a lot of conversations around the offense. We've had a lot of conversations around sort of what, where, where the disconnect may, may exist within the lineup that um, whether it's in situations where we have put runners on base and there's runners in scoring position situations or it's just, you know, some games where it's gone dry for us and we haven't put a ton of runners on base. I don't know. The talent is for sure there. And, I, you know, I, I think our team is going to have the ability to go out and play free go out and play with, with an ease about us. Nobody expected us to be here um, at the beginning of the season. And I think we expected to be here. I'm not sure too many people that else that did, other than recognizing that we had a young, talented team that had some, for sure, had some skills on it. That, but, and, and now it's about going out and showing that we can play in this environment. I think it's going to be a great test for our younger players. I think we have some veteran players that have done it before that we will be leaning on, as we always do in these times of uh, this time of year. Um, and we play tough and we play hard and anything's going to happen. And I'm, I'm excited for that, to watch that opportunity take, to take shape. I, 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 again, I don't, I'm not sure that there's a carryover effect from the last three days to tomorrow. I'm not sure there is. I think it's a brand new environment and, and the team that's able to take a deep breath and recognize in the moment, go out and execute in at bat, get on base and steal that base and do it the right way or take that extra base when we need to. I think that's the team that's going to win. When did you kind of start to believe that this postseason was possible? I mean, I know you always you felt good about the team in spring training. Yeah. When did you start to? I mean, for sure in the beginning of June. You know, that, 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 that's when it was. Like, we came out of that Red Sox series um, at the end of May, and you know we were we were doing pretty well. We were kind of holding our own at that point. I remember having a conversation about if we played 500 to this point moving forward, would end up in the mid 80s with wins. And from that point forward, we pushed the envelope up to 16 to 17 games over 500. And I didn't envision that part of of being part of the story for us at that point in time. And then yeah, we've talked a lot about you know the skid as we went through July, into June and July, and then into that right after the All Star break. I think it was nine in a row that we lost right after the All Star break. So we kind of went up and down from that point forward, but it was it was in that mode because at that point in time the offense had definitely taken a jump way forward from where we sort of projected some of the guys. I mean, Corbin living up to every ounce of what the hype would have been going into the season, that that's not something you kind of pencil pen in, right? That could be in pencil, but it's not something you necessarily pen in and you know, Cattell was doing really well, Gurriel was having a monster season and and Walk obviously um in the middle of that area of our lineup was just, we were doing a really good job. Um, and then we, you know, we went through some inconsistencies for various points of time, the but we had some highs in there too. We talked about that the other day, you know, the, the series coming out of Colorado and going into San Diego and sweeping that double header. That was a, it was huge for us. We won six out of seven versus the Cubs. Like if we hadn't won six out of seven versus the Cubs, we're probably not sitting here today. Right. We, 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 we took care of that. We put them, they were way above us at, at the beginning and we put them behind us by the time we were done with that. And had we not done that, we wouldn't be sitting here today. So as much as, you know, the backing into the playoffs thing, well, 10 days ago, we, if we had stopped it there, we wouldn't have backed into the playoffs. Right. Like, and we put ourselves in that position for a specific reason. Whereas when we first went to go play the Cubs, we were a couple, three games down on the two to three games down on the Cubs in the second spot. So there were a lot of highs in those moments too. Um, but I would say June-ish was probably when we really start to feel like that team, the team was kind of really coming together. Mike, Brandon fought certainly had his, his struggles early in the season, got sent down a couple times. Just what have you seen in his development over the course of the year? We talked about <clears throat> in early May when we made some pitching moves that we were going to have three rookies in our starting rotation from that point moving forward. And I believe what I said at the time was, when you have rookie pitchers in your starting rotation, you're going to have some ups and downs. You're, you're going to deal with a lot of inconsistencies at times, and, and we, we did that. And Rhino threw some great games for us. Brandon threw some great games for us. Tommy Henry threw some great games for us, and, and, and there were some on the other side. And, yeah, we had to make some changes up and down the roster with a number of our players. Um, Tori said to Brandon when we sent him down, we're sending you down right now. Obviously, he had been pitching the way he did. Um, but you're going to be back here in the second half pitching meaningful baseball games for us. And that, that's proved to be very truthful, not just for tomorrow, but for, for, the, for the better part of the last month. Um, he, he's going to be handed a challenge, but we believe in his stuff, in his makeup, in his preparation, that he's capable of handling this. Curious, Mike, um, this is probably more of a question for a manager like Tori, but in your experience, being around some young players, is there, is there 
some advice you could even give to a young player entering a playoffs in a hostile environment like this? What have you seen in this? Yeah, it's probably more appropriate for a manager. I've never been in that situation. I, I don't know the way the way I feel like when the moment when the moment gets bigger, right? Being able to breathe and be able to get your A swing off or execute your A pitch in the moment, um, dealing with the rush of adrenaline, but channeling in a way where you can execute, I, I would guess is probably one of the separators. Probably one of the separators when we talk about veteran players, the number one thing that comes back is, you know, the moment's not too big for them. You know, the, the, the game can slow down for them when, when it starts to really ratchet up in, in the crowd and, and everything else. I think that's what you're probably talking about there, is they have the ability to slow that moment down, whereas young players just don't have that experience having done that before. And in some cases, maybe having failed in that moment before and understanding what the, you know, that it's still the game of baseball, even though there's more people watching now. Was there anybody in Boston, a young player that stood out to you that, I mean, Petey, from the day he stepped onto the onto the onto the field, was yelling and screaming at everybody in the dugout. So, I think he was probably fairly comfortable from day one. Um, Jacoby Elsbury, uh, Jacoby Ellsbury for us in 2007 came up as a rookie and was batting leadoff in the World Series. I think, um, you know, we, we we've seen this happen and excel, like play and excel. Our rookies are probably going to be in a little different situation. That team was probably skewed more veteran. You know, um, but that that it, that's going to be asked of them, and you know, yeah, it, it it can be done. This, the excitement and the talent that these guys bring to the table, they have they have a chance to alter how this series looks, and I'm excited to watch them go do it. I know you're not you haven't you know, like finalized your roster until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you're leaning towards 14 position players, 12 pitchers. Yes, players. yes, leaning in that direction. I, Tori will address the roster when it's. When, when it's time, we're having some final conversations. Mike, but that's my guess is where we end up, yes. Sorry. Uh, it sounds like the, the cost for starting the trade deadline was, was pretty heavy for you guys. Just curious, now that you're here yeah. at this point, how do you view that in, in retrospect? Not, not I said at the time I was disappointed I didn't acquire a starting pitcher. So, yeah, the cost we had to weigh versus what was being asked for. And I, I think I said, like, look, taking Alec Thomas off the team, that would have been the cost for some in some cases. And... I, I was, didn't want to do that, for, you know? For controllable? Yeah. And, and in some cases for non-controllable guys. At least the ask, what, what, you know. And, and yeah, there were, other, there were other permutations and there were other choices we could have made, not just that. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish we had acquired a starting pitcher. We, we had set out, that was one of the things we wanted to accomplish at the deadline. And we'd, I, did, I didn't get that done, yeah. But... We're here in a series in the playoffs. We have three really good starting pitchers. I think our bullpen is certainly much better than it was at the deadline. And that's a weapon in a playoff series to have four to five deep in your bullpen that you feel really good about running out there and shortening the games up. I think that's also a way of attacking in the playoffs. Like most playoff starters aren't going as long as they used to go anyway. And it becomes a bullpen game in the fifth and sixth inning much more than it used to in the past. Yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, look, anyone that tells you to go off into the regular season thinking that they've set their bullpen up on, on day one is, is not telling you the truth. Because <laughs> that thing's going to change by day 15, and it's going to change by day 60 even more. And I think what when we acquired, and, and again, this is on me, not having the closer from day one, I think if this team had a closer from day one, I think the guys in front would have pitched the way they did for longer during the season, and I think this team would be in a slightly different spot. So I, I, I got that. We, we did fix that at the deadline. I do think that was a major change and a shift for the guys that pitched in front of Paul. Um, not that they can't handle that situation. It's just it ends up, you know, working out in a lot of cases of guys that are growing into that. We have a lot of still a lot of young guys that are pitching in those leverage roles, and I think it I think it benefits them. I do. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on that, but I I, I don't think it's a surprise that since Paul come, has come here, our bullpen has pitched completely differently. Do you feel like that's been more the Sure. Well, Ginkle's done an unbelievable job and has improved and he's and he's and, and he's pounding his stuff. And yeah, that's I, I think it helps 
from a from a role standpoint to have the guy behind you in some cases I, I we've seen this before like guys aren't wondering who's going out into the ninth inning right they they they're now figuring out what they're going to do in the seventh or the eighth um and now they're not wondering what's coming out in the ninth right they they, they know once that's happening it's it's on paul thanks mike yep thank, thank you mike. mike appreciate it you're welcome